you know, when the building mechanic completely changed and I threw a hissy fit, uh, cause I basically just learned how to glitch build, you know, pre beyond with the tier method. Uh, and then all of a sudden, blam, here, here's a whole new thing. And I lost it <laughs> like a yeah. little baby. I was throwing hissy fits. My action pants turned into cranky pants and, uh, you know, it was uh, a nightmare. And thankfully for some amazing friends that I met through this community, ER Burroughs talked me down from the ledge. And Kibbles helped with that. And uh, JC as well a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, I said, okay, all right. And actually, and so did American Psycho. I can't forget about AP. Um, and I'm like, all right. So I calmed down. You know, I just had figured out how to make the corkscrew and everything, you know, Kibble's corkscrew, and I started messing with that. And then we lost how to do the Kibble's corkscrew, and he had just figured it out, actually. And then came in and, you know, thought I had lost, uh, you know, the ability to make the Atlas seed, which I was like, you know, I had just made that as well. And then we got a new building mechanic, fought with it for a while, and then instead of being a negative thing, I tried to turn it into a positive thing. Like, all right, well, what can we do now? You know, how is building going to be? You know, and even from when I was live streaming before Glitch Building, for me, it was always about showing the building mechanic and asking questions about it, you know, and seeing what others were doing and, you know, trying to inspire creativity and go, look, you know, there's other ways to do it, you know, because I was touring bases back before Beyond and seeing a lot of really neat looking shells, but, you know, people kind of, it looked like they would get started and then lose interest, yeah. you know, f for some reason. And it's so great uh, to see how building has uh, progressed with the game and how the community of builders have really kind of sunk their teeth into this. And, the amount of amazing creativity. I, after my break, I was like, I don't even know if I should come back because I'm seeing some great stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be building anything that's cool anymore. There's so much cool stuff out there. <laughs> you know what? It's it, The building community has taken off in, in terms of creativity and oh, so many different builds. It's amazing. And, um, you, you know, like, yes, there's a lot of circular sort of objects out there, but that's yes. only because it's such a, a we'll good get into shape. That. It, you know, it, well, it's, yes, and, and I agree with you on, on what you're about to say, but it, it's been a really good shape, and it's a repeatable thing that can be done very well. And like you say, the snap two points that um, yeah. Beeble Bum has designed it to oh, be. thank you, Beeble. Have made oh, it. Thank you, oh, thank you. Yeah, no kidding. Thank you. That's uh, it's changed my early my circle way making of pre Beyond, and even after Beyond, uh, briefly, was time consuming. <laughs> that's a polite way of putting it. <laughs> it, it it was worth it if you could do it um but man it was very time consuming and, and i i learned how to do it and did it once and never did it again only because of the time that was involved um and in the end it, i didn't get to keep it because an update happened and it it mm. just yeah it borked destroyed the everything well it but, borked the whole planet and it was underground yeah. i was like well so much for that it was like six hours wasted you know <laughs> but you know it, it turned out to be, you know, a blessing in disguise, if you will. Uh, yeah, it was, you know, something that um, it, it changed the, for me, it, it changed a lot of things and it made it a lot easier to do that. Um, and I think with so many uh, players out there that found that same sort of uh, inspiration, they, they too have also done a lot of those similar builds. Um, and, yep. and so I, I think the circle is definitely one of the greater things that has, has been sort of figured this, out in this game. Yeah. I look forward which to Which then so led to more. the sphere, which, the, you know, and then a better dome. Um, you know, I mean, all of that really spawned from that perfect circle coming through. You know? It did. Yeah. Yeah. And I use it all the time. And, and almost all of my builds now, um, because. It, it's not a square. Um, it, you know, <laughs> like, every, it, it, squares can be cool. The squares can be cool, you know. Um, but you know, when it's it's simple snap two squares um, and, and so on, you can only go so far in your creativity, well, and then you can um, have to start doing other things to, you know. Um, and, yes yeah. and no. I mean, I, I do agree with you there, um, but I've seen some really really creative builds and very beautiful. Um, no glitch, and it's just a question of lighting, 
placement of objects, um, you know, uh, there's still, you know, I've seen plenty of non-glitch, like multiple non, you know, I mean, enough where it's like you figure you would start going, okay. But a lot of it, an, a good reason for that is, especially now, the terrain is so much better. Um, it's the creativity portion of it, you know, like when I, I see new builders who don't know how to glitch build or people who feel that they can't glitch build, which it's a lot easier than people think. And you look at their bases that are non-glitch and you're like, dude, you know, don't down yourself. This is beautiful. You know, it's beautifully put together. You've done amazing things with what, you know, is given normally without manipulation, you know, it's, uh, and I don't want to even use manipulation. The mechanic exists. You know, absolutely agreed. Yeah, there are some amazing builds that are not circular. Um, <laughs> and I, yeah, I think I, I sort of, you know, sort of misspoke a little bit there um, in terms of inspirement uh, or inspiring, you know, others. The circle is, is was definitely oh, something definitely. That I mean, a lot of others. Um, and I, I'm currently doing circular things myself. <laughs> well, it's hard not so, to. I mean, I can't really, you it know, is. but <laughs> it's hard not to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I built a lot of square structures myself and, and try to dabble in, in making them look different or, or unique and, and so on and, and, and so forth. And you can do wonderful things with them. It's all about the decor, the lighting, like you said, yeah. um, um, and the, the angles that you put them on, the environment. Um, I've built some tree houses that are square. I've seen some amazing sky bases that are, are so oh, yeah. square Woo. and rectangular and um, even sort of um, pentagonal. Right, because yeah. they're not. That's not a perfect circle, but it's pretty close, you know. It's a circular shape. Yes. That's right. Um, yeah. And you know, some really amazing stuff. Um, and, and not too long ago, I was at a sky base that was just beautifully done with the interior, with plants, and and a lot of the other cool uh, like Quicksilver item menu uh, stuff that you can get at the Quicksilver synthesis bot. It, it really, you can do some really creative and beautiful things. Um, one of the things that you can't do is what what you've done here. You can't just throw True. that up. <laughs> um, that took a few methods. Um, yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to turn this into a, a tutorial or anything like that. No, but, I, I mean, don't mind. One of the, what are some of the simplest or simpler, what are the, some of the methods that you had to employ to create uh, a, an object like that? Well, let's take a walk. <laughs> <laughs> down the hill here and you All can right. kind of see um, how this uh, is sort of started and and this is not actually started with the perfect circle you can use it um, but you have to start drawing the panels in and the wider your circumference with this technique uh, you will start to get uh, more of a spherical shape than an egg shape okay. but you can you just have to manipulate the pill light um, a little bit you know your reference points, right? But if you look here, hand uh, placing, yeah, the pillar. Exactly. Now, yeah. if I could interrupt you on a, on a quick moment here, you said mm -hmm. you use a pillite, and I know a lot of people have frowned upon the pillites because you know, like, they're not friendly when it comes to deletion um, or, or taking your parts with you when you go to delete <laughs> one. Um, why is it that you use a pillite? Is it is it just because it you does it light up for you when you when you get it all powered and everything? Well, or? it's it's a combination of things you know it every build uh you know requires you know every requires the right tools you know yes to make to make it happen now when i built this originally pre beyond it started off with a round room and what you used to do was put a window in it uh green stated drop down go over to the uh the wall because that was the first item that you could go up to build and because that was the only choice you used to have back in the day um, and then you would glitch walls around a round room creating an eight-sided room um, and then I would attach the archways like you see here and then put the pill lights in their place and then I would have to take the pill light because that was sort of I guess the, you know, that was like the way to kind of mark where you were going to glitch. It'd be like a wire glitch, a standard wire glitch today. 
Yes. Um, so you're kind of putting that wire uh, marker where you want to glitch your part. Um, and then again, you put the, the pill light up, you'd rotate it to get the next part's orientation to match the angle of the pill light. You would drop out of the menu, scroll over, and then I would pop up to the window. Okay. So um, you're using the lines and, and the, the, the basic shape to line it up. Um, yeah. Along the thing. Okay. So right. Where's the wire? Tool. Correct. Whereas the wire doesn't really work for this method. And also because you're left over with uh, the windows and see-through areas, what ends up happening is the glitch point off of the arch, uh, you can see the wire cutting through. And yes, I could now use the, you know, the wire hider, but... Um, also, if you make a mistake and you delete the wire, you still have a chance of phase deletion. Yeah, so, I noticed that on some things still. Right. Yeah. But with um, the pill lights also with this, it provides that really nice glow, which highlights you know, the angles of the window. And also providing, it kind of helps... Uh, you know, with seeing the shape of the of the the object, you know, instead right. of lighting it from in, it's already, it's just kind of glowing from its part. Um, right, and because helps it's embedded. Highlight the angles. Right. Yeah, yes. it's embedded in there, and you know that's something I've noticed. Uh, you know, that I've learned in glitch building is um, when you use certain uh, certain parts for the those glitch points, um, pill lights. When when you attach to them, it's like a seamless blend right into where you've attached it. But if you paint a wire on the surface, it's raised. The item you glitch onto, it, it, it's raised uh, like a half floor <laughs> well, length or something. The the pill light also raises it a little bit too. It's just less, and it's and also it depends on what part it's on, how it's phasing on that part because it phases differently on the part depending on how it's placed. Mm -hmm. If it's placed in a straight line, in a circle, in a whatever. Um, but yes, there is a height difference with the electrical connector. Be, uh, on the wire, um, the wire just sits a little higher. Um, you know, whatever the collision is to the floor. Okay. Uh, that's just the way it seems to work. And now, what about switches? Do, do they have a, a height differential too? Um, no, switches, oh, yes, a little bit as well. I apologize. But again, it depends on how it phases into the part. These arches, every angle that I've made, every single section here, Yes. The pill light or switch, and I could use a switch in this, uh, and actually have been thinking about it because it has multiple glitch points attached yes. to it. Yeah, I think um, there is three, I believe. Uh, correct. I used a lot. I've used a, a little mm -hmm. bit of it myself. Oh, I use that. Ooh, thank you. I need that. Just reminded me of something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> and actually I haven't been using switches uh, because I've just been, you know, I took a break and I'm just kind of warming up again, just kind of getting my mind and my hand and my glitch motion back. Um, you know, so I, that's why I'm building something familiar. Right. Um, I actually am building, and if you want to take a warp to my R and D mess, uh, I, you know, but this is a nicer environment. Um, I actually, uh, you can see in one of my live streams, um, I actually, actually, last night's live stream, I actually combined the APG engine, what I used to call the uh, Sci-Fi Kaleidoscope, uh, but then got renamed uh, the APG engine, I guess, uh, which I'm very honored that I think it was Joby and Pez uh, named it that. Thank you, guys. Um, I mixed the... Uh, this technique with a kaleidoscope or an engine. So as you look into the sphere of windows, in the middle is a kaleidoscope. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's really cool. It, I, you know so what? take one of these and yeah. put a kaleidoscope in it. <laughs> so do you have to extend the, the circular radius? Oh, um, yeah, and it changes the shape. Okay. Uh, if you would like, I don't know how this format is working, but if you'd like, we could you know, warp over there, you could do a jump from the Nexus, you know, I could go through the teleporter here, and then you could Nexus jump uh, to my R&D, and I could show you what it looks like. Let's save that for a little bit later, if we can. And okay. We can, yeah, right, just sure. in case we run short of time, and we can always just uh, tap that on as an extra recording yeah, if no needed. Worries. So, 
Um, no worries. Okay. So, all right. So you, you talked about the switches and the wires, and I interrupted mm-hmm. you. I, I apologize on that. Uh, no, no, no. Right in the middle of the pillow talk. Um, well, when you have a thought, sometimes you need to get it out. Before yeah, you forget yeah. It. Now, <laughs> okay. So, now, I mean, quite often I, I opt to use a pillow because of its more seamless uh, or less height differential than others. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes a pillow just doesn't work. Um, is there like True. a situation? Do you have like certain situations where you you know you'd, you'd rather one thing but it's just not working and so you have to make do with something else and then it turns out to be better? Always, um, <laughs> <laughs> there's always that situation, uh, and unfortunately, it's sometimes it's a better, sometimes it's a worse, mm-hmm. uh, or sometimes it's a okay, I can't do that, um, and now I need to rethink entirely, but. Sometimes that turns into a better, you know, it forces you into a different direction with your build. You know, I get frustrated easily sometimes because you have this thought, you have a vision, and then sometimes for some reason you can't execute that, you know. Um, but I've been trying to learn to calm down and, you know, be a bit less uh, grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Quitting smoking has um, its ways, unfortunately. You know, they make us all grumpy. Uh. <laughs> Like, you know, working around this fauna on the planet, you know, what, it made me grumpy initially. And then I'm like, all right, how do I make it work? Like, can it, like instead of, you know, uh, worrying about it, can I work it into what I'm doing? So if I show up and it's in one render, you know, it'll still look good as opposed to, you know, the normal render that I usually see, you know, because every once in a while the height changes here. Yeah, that's got to be a really kind of frustrating, um, you know, to, to have something, you know, partially built or almost completed, and then you come back the next day and it renders at a, a different height. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very frustrating. And I mean, a lot of time and effort you put into a build like that, and then all of a sudden it's changed, and you're like, well, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything. Like, what? Why? <laughs> <change>. Why? <laughs> Down on your knees doing the, uh, the emoji. Um, <laughs> no! Shut <laughs> But you found, a, you found a way around it, and you, you did a hell of a job. Um, I mean, it, it, once you figure it out, then you sort of, I guess you figure out how to manipulate it so that you can replicate it every time and no uh, well, I mean are you able to tell which render that you can that you're going to get when you you build on um I, I've been spending a lot of time here just kind of experimenting and I'm not sure whether or not it's going to be you know a similar sort of thing this planet as opposed to another planet is it going to just you know the timing how often, you know, one render shows up over another, you know, is it going to be, you know, I've, there's no real consistency I'm noticing, you know, if I go through a portal or the nexus, or if I warp out of the planet or into the planet, you know, sometimes it changes, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes I come back and it's the same, you know, a number of times, and then I come back one time and it's changed, then I leave the planet, come back, and it's the same, but then I'll you know, leave the planet again, come back, and it'll change. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, a, a very inconsistent. That's why I've got three levels here um, of archway to kind of see where, you know, the center is eventually going to end up in two different renders, you know, and then I can hopefully try to find a happy medium. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, at the same time, you're learning, too, on what – what works, what doesn't, is there a where, you know, a place where you can place it where it, it sort of works all of the time or, or maybe the, that's just an impossible feat at this time of the game, right? I'm um, you just thinking it's impossible and I, and I apologize for interrupting this time, <laughs> um, but I've noticed that, you know, I watched the one that now I know, you know, it, the middle is, you know, I have a, you know, a reference um, and that goes up and down the same height all the time. But these two uh, that I'm working with now seem to act independently to that one's render. Huh. You know, so instead of all of them going up at the same time and all of them going down at the same time, they seem to do it independently. Wow. That, that, that's kind of mind melting there that, to think about, how, you know, like, well, which one is it going to be next? So now right. are these ones here, are these rendered at the, the correct height? This one looks like it's a little bit low based on the center 
ring. Well, is that right, right? But I'm doing a different shape here. Okay. So I'm altering the shape in order to try to compensate for the two. Now the this is the lowest render I think on a consistent basis. Okay. So there seems to be like a consistent height and then a random height and they do them independently it seems. Like when the one that I've got completed up top is at the high render and I'm meaning that the beat the pearl in the middle is higher. Mm -hmm. Um than the one that I measured for its consistency. So instead of all three of them raising, that one will raise, these will stay the same. Or that one will go back to the one that, you know, what I call the the uh, uh, the appropriate render. Um, you know, this one will stay or it will raise. It, it It's odd. It's inconsistent. Okay. Well, you know, I guess you can't win them all. Um, no. Maybe, maybe AC <laughs> will make a few bug patches here and there over the you know, coming months and sort of fix that kind of rendering issue. Um, because... It's been going on since pre-beyond. Oh, wow, that long. You know, and I hadn't even noticed, to be honest with you. Um, there's something to be said about building uh, to match or suit the landscape or building in with the landscape. Um, I always tried to achieve that on, you know, a, a lot of my builds that were sort of like, you know, coming out of a cliff uh, face or on a mountaintop. Mm -hmm. um, never anything quite so intricate, you know, to have it, you know, within a plant in, in itself. Because, I mean, really, the whole thing is a plant. The seed in the center is part of it floating, and you've got it sort of all right. intertwined right perfectly in the middle of it. I mean, that that's just... I, I, I don't even know if I even would have attempted that, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, I mean, in, the only reason it – well, if we'll go back up to the top here, we'll head back up. So, <laughs> we're looking at something, you know, at what you're – you can kind of see how I went through there. It, it was just a question of, you know, once I realized – you know, I built the first one based on showing up to the planet, seeing the plant there. And I just finished, you know, I, it would, I'm like, all right, I'm my first build back. I'm going to build something I'm familiar with. Um, and, you know, in some exploration, seeing these plants, I kind of already was thinking incorporating it into this environment, but I wasn't sure how yet. And then after building it, I was like, well, wait a minute. It's a round shape. That pearl is round. Why not have it so it's, you know, inside it? You know, it just kind of, I was like, oh, that that shape fits that shape. You know, and I just happened to be building it, and I landed on the planet, and it just kind of struck me. Um, and then it was, you know, I landed on the planet, and I'm like, all right, look for an EM field, even though it wasn't important for this. Um, and... Took some pipes, found a rough center, brought the pipes up, you know, rough center to the pearl, because I was thinking, all right, I want the pearl in the yeah, center of the what, center band. What you got down there. And the, the other right, ones. the yes. pearl in the center band, yeah. Um, and then had to make a 45 floor merge in order to do what I was doing. And then, so when I went to go put down the fl first floor just to kind of get my uh, staging for it. You know, I centered the floor, you know, I took the camera over the top and I centered it, you know, between the prongs and tried to center it as best as possible with the build camera because you can't quite get a true over-the-top view. That is a little um, frustrating, I noticed, yes. You know, <laughs> you're kind of, you know, it's a little cockeyed and sometimes, you, you know, it's hard to get centered. Um you know, and then laid down the floor pan panel, and then blam, you know, the plant disappeared. Poof. You know, I, you know, because that's what it does, you know. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. There's so many, <laughs> so many dead plants that way. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so, you know, then I started building, hoping that I was centered. Um, you know, I did some measuring and, you know, extended some pipes to try to make sure that it was, and, 
you know, just, and it, you know, I had to do it a couple of different times, uh, you know, initially, you know, I, and then I worked around it, plant came back and the render was different the first time I did it. So I'm like, all right, well, what's going on? And then I remembered back pre beyond one of my builds, you know, had the terrain dramatically changed and shifted. Didn't just like go up or down. It like changed groups of mushrooms that were usually in one spot. were in a completely different spot and a completely that. different number, you know, a cliff edge, uh, an overhang would be there. And then all of a sudden it would, just that section would be now flat. You know, you would have no more overhang. This at least is, seems to be a consistent up and down. You know, it's not a complete terrain alteration. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just took time. You know, I, I was, I measured hoping that I was centered it, you know, and I was pretty close, but when it came back again, um, and I realized that it wasn't in the right spot. And I'm like, all right, I got to break it down and rebuild it. So I broke it down. And then I still had a, uh, a piece of uh, leftover um, setup. So I was able to actually get the center better. Um, and the plant was still there. And then one time I re was going to rebuild, I put the floor panel down and the plant stayed. And it hung around for a while. And I was like, cool. So I was able to actually really center it. That's um, that's lucky. <laughs> yeah, you know, on, on one of the other ones <laughs> that I was working on down there. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, then the next time I came back and put a floor panel down, it disappeared. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, I'm like, all right, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> or in this um, case, pulling my tentacles out. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I mean, it, you know, again circles you know and it just happened to fit you know i just happened to think and I, you know uh and the early version you know it was a neat little trinket but it just there wasn't a planet environment that it seemed to really belong in well we were somewhat you know to, to our planet environments uh, and right al although they're procedurally generated there was your basic types and they all sort of seem yeah. to have the same basic plants based on the planet type you know there Nothing like these these void egg this, type style planets. Um, yeah, this new update with the terrain and the oh. new flora and fauna is just beautiful. The yeah. bloom's still a little much in some areas, but uh, you know I'm sure that will be addressed at some point. Yeah, they they really outdid themselves with the, the different yeah. biomes. Oh. Um, you know I found oh, some yeah. really amazing things myself. And when you find one of those things, one of those planets, and you have an idea in your head. You just can't wait to get started building. And I think the hardest part for me is placing the dang base computer. Like, where do you put the darn thing? Yeah. You know, like, put it here. Yes. No, because that's where I want to build. And then now I, now yes. I just eliminate a whole build area, circumference. And do I put it over here? But then it's if it's too big, it won't reach. And then I have to do some, you know, I have to extend my base one way or the other. Or, you know, and then I thought, oh, I'll be clever. I'll bury it. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. don't bury your base computer. That doesn't go so well. Yeah, you can yeah. dig it up. But see, when you go to take the screenshot <laughs> or when you go to ground. get into your ship before you've started building or putting a landing pad down. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, burying it, not good. Um, so yeah, finding a, the right placement of that base computer sometimes <laughs> is, is probably one of the biggest challenges. And I spend more time surveying my, my, the, the, the land that I have to work with trying to figure out where I want to put the base computer. Um, <laughs> then, you know, then actually, you know, like, building and, yeah you know i, I mean I, i've sat for hours sometimes going thinking i could put it here and then i go and put it there and then i realize no 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 don't put it here pick it up and you know and uh geez some of well the, some of the things i tell you they they make it really interesting and challenging at times the the one thing I, and that was an issue wasn't really an issue for me here until later when I realized that the base computer was right next to the build and if you land too close to the plant you're gonna kill it yeah. Uh, which then means waiting for it to grow back again, you know, yeah, which could take an yeah. undetermined amount of time. Um, but I've seen some creative covering uh, when the base computer ends up in the build. <laughs> um, that, yeah, I definitely will agree. I, 
that's always like, well, where do I put it? Where is it not going to interfere with something? Or, you know, where is it going to look, uh, you know, be out of the way or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, where can you hide it even? Um, yeah. I know one of my recent builds was one of those low orbit um, uh, builds. Uh, thanks again to Beeble Bum for his amazing tutorial on that one. Um, but, you know, when I had it there, you got this floating base computer in the middle of the sky or, or low orbit way up there. Um, and it's usually above your base. And so it's it's just floating there. Uh, and I was like, well, God, I really want to hide this. And it, it just looks out of place. I know it's so tiny, but it looks out of place. And I, I just sort of thought, well, what if I, like, build something around it? And, I, it, you know, I, what could I build that was small enough but innocuous enough, right? And so I, I thought, well, okay, let, let's try one of those uh, marine shelters. And I stuck a marine shelter in there and a, and a couple of wings on it and made it look like a ship. And why not, right? Uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. like you said, throwing some parts around. And I kind of learned uh, a little bit about some stuff just doing that, you know, of – throwing some parts around and what I could do to try and hide that base computer in a way that was aesthetically pleasing to the base that I had built. Um, and I mean, you know, that's something I used to say on a regular basis. I love that you know, term. <laughs> with, you know, I mean, and, and, you know, the, my original in, instructor in getting me into glitch building was Dark Lord Zeller, because we all know, um, you know, he taught me how to tear glitch back in the day. And, right. You know, uh, he's the one that originally told me, Hey, look, you know, find a, you know, a dead planet, an airless planet. And, you know, so that there's not a lot of flora and fauna to render in, you know, and use it as a place to practice. And I was like, what a great idea, you know, a little R and D, you know, exactly. research and development area, you know, I learned that. And so you. that's what I ended up naming him. You know, now it's like anytime I, you know, want to have a, pl a playground, if you will, where it doesn't matter what, what's there and what it looks like, it, you know, it's where you just kind of go and practice your stuff, you know, and then go to the planet you want to build on, you know, and in the, in the mode, you know, normal, you know, perm or whatever. Um, and, you know, take what you've been playing around with and throwing parts at and use it, you know, in context. Absolutely. I, I use I use my R and D base all the time. Um, it, it it's this creative account is is what it's on, and I literally I just I switch over to creative and I go to my R and D base and and I figure things out, and then I take that knowledge of uh, the spacing or however I wanted to do whatever I wanted to do, and I take what I figured out there, and then I go to my the build that I'm really building it on, and I put it there. And what's really unique is it's left me with sort of like a graveyard of of partial builds of different <laughs> things them. from stairways to spiral staircases to I think I was testing out an elevator at the time but this is after Beyond came out um, or sorry next and the, the teleporter stopped working uh, the, the way that we all got used to them so like I was all these different things you know um, it's where I learned the APG engine, you know, um, and started throwing stuff around and, and including a, a nice couch right in front of it so I could stare at it for hours. <laughs> yeah, those so, things are a bit mesmerizing. Oh, they sure are. So, you know, I've got a few few questions for you here, and I should probably get to them before we run out of recording time. <laughs> um, but I, I really wanted to focus on on the base that is here and, and what one of the things that you're, you know, that you are known for and and have, have done something truly unique in the game. So um, for that, I, I like applaud you many, many, many times over for thank you, thank finding you. one mean, of those amazing things that just draws the, people's attention. Thank you. I mean, the kaleidoscope, is that what you're talking about, the APG engine? Uh, well, you know, I could talk about the APG engine or I could talk about the uh, Void Egg because the Void well, Egg is I, where I, we are. Yeah, true. Um, but I... I was just going off you sitting on the couch staring at the mesmerizing because <laughs> <laughs> well, it is it's oddly things. it's oddly uh, but so many other builders have i mean look at people bum and all the things he's figured out and you know if it weren't for my friend jabai doing the first initial smaller version the kaleidoscope probably wouldn't have happened you know and if it weren't for people's perfect circle method you know my friend Jabai probably wouldn't have put those parts together. And, you know, it's just, and without the blender glitch and the banjo glitch and banjo, you know, discovering that particular thing. It all leads and, together. It does. Yeah, you know, and that's what's so great about this community is, 
you know, and even stylistically, you know, looking at other people's bases and taking elements from them and using it in your own build, you know, um, and, you know, and taking these techniques and, you know, seeing the things that people have built with that technique and then doing something different with that same technique. I mean, it's just, that's what's so amazing about this community, about Hello Games, uh, and, and is the, the back and forth of knowledge and, and, uh, and, and helping each other with stuff, you know. Well, the collaborative um, aspect. The of collaborative it, you know, aspect. Being able Thank to you. work yeah, together in, in multiplayer, which has changed how the game is. Yeah, um, which is being able to funky work together right now. and build. It is a little funky, but there are things that we can do in multiplayer that you just can't do anywhere else. And 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 yeah. that includes like just learning off of each other, different methods, and seeing what works and what doesn't. And then somebody sees something and says, "Oh, hey." this gives me an idea and then they do that in front of you and then that gives you an idea and the next thing you know you've got like you said the kaleidoscope or APG engine and you know that that's one of the amazing things about the the, the whole No Man's Sky community um, you know builders and non-builders alike as well when you know we've all sort of worked together in our own different ways of playing the game um, and you know your way of playing the game is, is to build and build like truly amazing things um, one of the things I wanted to ask you is how long have you been building in, in No Man's Sky? Oh, Is this geez. like your first first and only love, or did you come to it over time? Um, well, I got the game day one, you know, before there was a building mechanic and building, um, and played for a while, took a break, came back when the building mechanic uh, came in, and basically we've been, you know, I started my live stream because I didn't see anyone doing it. Um, and talking about the building mechanic and, you know, I kept back in the day, you know, when I first started live streaming and building before I knew how to glitch build and, be, uh, you know, I was oftentimes I'd be like, all right, I'm going to try and break the game. Like, what can I build? What can I get away with? <laughs> you know, like, what can I do? You know, I'm, and, you know, so I'd start digging through the terrain and didn't at the time realize that it was going to grow back on me, <laughs> uh, yes, eventually, and, you know, we, <laughs> then you gotta dig yourself out. <laughs> which still happens, you know, but less so. And we do have a better terrain manipulator by far, um, and a better building mechanic by far. And thank I you like for the how building. you can refine the, the, the silicate. Now you can refine yeah. it into glass. So digging a hole for the sake of digging a hole is actually a useful thing now. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> you know, that leads me to one of my, uh, the next question, which you've, you've actually already answered, was how long have you been streaming uh, your builds in, in No Man's Sky? And I guess that was since Foundations, uh, the, when the building yeah. update came out. Um, a little after that. I, it was a bit, a little after that. But um, I want to say I'm going on three-ish three years. Three, three, three and a half. Yeah. You know, somewhere in that range. Um, and, uh, you know, it all started with just, you know, the game being a beautiful thing to look at for start, you know, just the, even before all this amazingness, um, you know, it's just a pretty game. And then when the building mechanic came about, you know, it's like, oh, finally, I can find a planet that's really nice and now I can make a home, you know, and you know, it was really neat, you know, and I just, you know, it's like Space Legos. I think E.R. Burroughs kind of, you know, said that once. And, uh, uh, definitely. You know, just, yes. You know, I, I just wanted to see what was possible, you know, and coming from sort of an artistic background, you know, it was just kind of a fun thing to do, you know, like work back then. It was like I was more trying to work in, above, around, dig into go into a cave, come out up and go up one of the tower things, go into the water. You know, I tried to go have layers and, you know, and uh, I think that's one of the reasons Dark Lord decided he's like, you know, was I had like, I think three subscribers or eight subscribers at one point. It was like Mary Lizzie, Sword, <laughs> and uh, Dark Lord Zelric showed up. I think Mary was talking to Dark Lord or something. He was like, you should see this guy building. He's, he does things a little bit different, you know? Uh -huh. And because uh, I didn't know what to do, I had no. There were the only things I had seen back then were ER 
uh, JC and uh, American Psychos it was, videos. It was somewhat of a and I'm like, how thing. did they do that? I was yeah. like, how the hell did they do that? So I'm on YouTube. I'm like Google searching, like base building in the game, and I couldn't find anything. So I'm like, you know what? I was recently single. I had some free time on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, my buddy's like, dude, there's all these people who live stream. Why not try live streaming? I was like, you know what? What the heck? Why not? You know, what's it going to hurt? You know, I'll, at least, you know, give me something to do. So I started, you know, live streaming building and I started trying to see what I could get away with. Like, how big could I make this thing? Where could I go with it? How could I stretch it out? You know, and I didn't know about casting parts back then. So I'm like, all right, well, I want to extend this base over to here. So if I build another base computer near it, you know, can I you know, mix the two builds and then that created issues. And, you know, so, you know, I, three, about three years, I guess. Yeah, and then some break in the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to break the game basically. <laughs> but, um, what, what, is, what exactly inspires you to build? Like what, is, is it just, are you architecturally sort of gifted and, and you just think of something when you land somewhere? Or ER, is you... an ER is architecturally gifted. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yes, I've seen, I've seen his stuff. It's yeah. amazing. His underwater okay. builds just blow me away. Oh my God. I haul his build. There's so many people out there that I look at. and I mean, an ER, JC, American Psycho, Kibbles, Ash, you know, all those guys, you know, and Dark Lord, uh, Zane, you know, all those guys are the ones that I, back when I first started building, you know, were the names I kind of saw popping up, you know, and the things that inspired me in the beginning, like, you know, ER and those guys knew how to tear glitch. And that's why the bases I was looking at, I'm like, how did they do that? How do, what is that? And that's what inspired me to start Googling how to build and getting on YouTube, like base building. And I couldn't find anything, you know? Yeah. Um, it was so underground. So like those yeah. who knew knew, but it wasn't it wasn't like widespread. Um, and, and that that's only happened recently, where it's become a lot more widespread, and people are sharing these techniques with everybody else. Well, and that was the thing as well. Like Dark Lord showed me, he's like, you know, and you know, and that's I was kind of I went off on a tangent there for a second. Um, you know, Dark Lord, you know, saw me building, you know, back then, and was like, hey, do you know how to glitch build? And I was like, glitch build. What is this? Another you must tool? Teach me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, what's going on? So, you know, that's again where he showed me, you know, he took me to an airless planet and it was, started showing me some stuff. Um, oh, pardon me, I kind of lost the train of thought there. No worries. Um, no worries. But, um, and you... yeah, so then I felt the need to, you know, in my live stream to, you know, obviously I'm now using it, <laughs> but. You know, that was kind of the point was to try to teach others or help others because I, you know, I couldn't find anything on base building. Now you can find a ton of people doing it. You know, I mean, it, there's so many great No Man's Sky content creators and so many, you know, great builders who are also content creators now. So, you know, there and, you know, people like Beeble Bum who create these amazing tutorials and Kibbles who created you know, one of the first uh, tutorials along with uh, Olo or Ash, I don't remember. And I know American Psycho did one tutorial as well back then. Uh, but now, you know, thankfully, you know, if you have an interest in this, you know, there is resources now. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, but that had been my goal initially was to inspire people to think about building in this game because I saw potential, you know, and I'm now seeing the potential that I saw back then being realized more now. It's blossoming. You know, it really yeah, is. and blossoming because of the community, because of Hello Games and how they listen to the community and because of this community sharing and watching it grow the way it has. Yeah. But that was my goal with live streaming was to, you know, inspire and hopefully help and, you know, possibly teach uh, some stuff, you know. Yeah. What can you um, can you explain to the to the audience, you know, those who may not already know, um, the tier glitching. Like, what what exactly is tier one, two, and three glitching? Uh, back in the day, I yeah. mean, it has no purpose now. If you try to tier glitch, your part goes like a hundred units out into nowhere. Um, tier glitching essentially, 
was you would green state a part, okay, and it had to be green stated. Mm -hmm. um, and you would drop out of the menu, down on the D-pad, scroll over to the menu folder that you wanted to get the one part initially from, go up into that menu, and then up to the part in build on your D-pad. Okay, so it was up, up X. Right. All right. Yes. Uh, then I remember this method. So right? we used to play right. palm balls using this method. Yep. Okay. So tier one, I believe, was the adjacency. Tier two was the down, go over the menu, up, and then to your build. So right. that was your tier two. Yeah. Then the tier three, I accidentally discovered shortly after Dark Lord was teaching me how to glitch build because I was trying to get the up and build motion. And then with my clumsy left hand, I'm left-handed, uh, my clumsy thumbs, I inadvertently went up and left or up and right, which brought up a underwater tube. Uh -huh. And Dark Lord came back to my R&D area and was like, dude, how did you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I just was messing around trying to practice, and it, and it happened. And he's like, so Dark Lord, you know, you know, being the thinker, you know, and me being the, you know, just a, I like, that's why I say throwing parts. Cause that's what I do. I just kind of experiment, sculpt, you know, sketch, and then hopefully something happens and I'm like, Oh, cool. All right. Well, how did I just do that? Boom, boom, boom. And then I have to start thinking, you know, about it, you know, more, uh, structurally mathematically or whatever. But, um, you know, and then that became the tier three and dark Lord was like, Oh, he's like, you went up and left. Or up and right, you know, however the menus were set up back then. Uh, and he's like, it's oh, it's like an old fighting game move where you're like up left and, you know, punch, you know. Uh, so then that became the tier three. Okay. And so basically you had initially one choice per menu. Or you, you would take the pill light, you know, and drop down. Um and you know, use it like a wire glitch in a way. Um, so it was the it's, gateway. Part. Yeah, you it was the gateway. It was that, and you down and over to the next one. Right. Right. It was much more complicated, and you know, back then too, if you remember, we needed uh, you know scaffolding, uh, you know, to just get around to build. <laughs> well, yeah, there was no build camera. We had to stand in front of the the, the area that you were in. It was. It was difficult. I, I do remember. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for the build camera, uh, build camera, hello games. Oh my oh, goodness. Yes. yes. Uh, that was probably the best, uh, addition, uh, added to the build mechanic. It, it's, it's definitely made things a lot easier for me to build. Um, I, I find, you know, I'm not a third person. Uh, I don't like walking around in third person. I'm very much like first person when I'm exploring, Same. but when I build, I cannot build in first person. I have to get into the build camera because I need to be able to manipulate the camera or my angle or all these little tweaky things uh, to get in close uh, where you can't, you just can't walk in a lot of cases or, or height, you know, or it, sometimes you need to get a little higher up and see an overhead shot, but you can't do that if you're seeing it first person. And so, right. yeah, the build camera was definitely one of the best uh, things they've added to the game. Um, and it's, it's made the building aspect of the game that much easier um, and more fun to create these really cool stuff. Mm. I will definitely agree with you. If it weren't for the build camera, doing a lot of things that I've seen would be very difficult to yeah. achieve. And, and you know now we've got wire glitching, which which comes into the picture. And oh, yeah. uh, I know that's that's used very heavily. I use it probably mostly myself. You've got uh, the the. Could you describe what the the? I believe there's the three wire glitches, or is it two? There's uh, there's wire glitch, uh, banjo glitch, blender glitch, right. and the uh, the banjo glitch is basically the blender glitch. But uh, just adding more parts to the Blending same connect. Two or more parts together to the same connect. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. Now, so which is you're basically. Your favorite? 
Um, blender. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's mine too. <laughs> that's that's a that's a known question there. <laughs> Blender's probably my favorite. I mean, when Beeble and I first figured that out, you know, that we could, you know, start adding this, you know, multiple parts to create new part, new looking parts. Uh, you know, we went nuts at one of my R and D's. Uh, you know, it was Beeble, myself, and uh, I think Dark Lord Zarek, and uh, there's another person there as well at the time I think I want to say Lone Pine um, and uh, yeah we just went nuts you know like look at this look at this no look at this look at this <laughs> and that's actually when I realized that I might be able to bring this technique back yeah it, it you know what it's one of the my most favorite uh, um, glitching moves as well as using the blender and and making designs and shapes and things that you know, uh, you wouldn't normally have suspected, right? Yeah. Putting two or three or four parts together mm-hmm. and coming up with something completely unique and different. Um, and uh, even just using a wire glitch becomes a, a blender glitch in a lot of cases because yeah. I'm blending something onto another thing, you know, whether it's two wall panels or, or whatever. I mean, um, using those moving parts is, is also a, a lovely feature to blend. I, I yeah. love doing that. <laughs> you know, um, is there a... Uh, sorry, I lost train of my thought there. No is, is there a special kind of build that you'd like to create? Like, is there something, not necessarily in the works, but something you've always wanted to recreate, uh, like a, a structure, a building, a temple, um, or anything? You know, nothing. You know, right now, I you know, I would like to build another structure. I'm just trying to find the spot mm-hmm. um you know back pre beyond i you know i built these frigates uh yeah, i had a frigate build uh, i remember that yeah when mm-hmm. i was using the light fissures and engines and nobody had thought of that yet for some reason mm-hmm. um and uh you know just have engine trail coming out they look great though. um and um and they make the noise you know it sounded like an engine yeah um but i kind of just most of what I do usually just kind of happens. I'll start with something and it just kind of grows into something, you know. Um, it's a very organic but, way of building. You just it, 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 exactly. start and whatever happens. And what happens, yeah. I mean, sometimes I go into it with a little bit of a plan, but nine times out of ten something happens and, I, you know, I have to be – I'm forced to think in a different direction. But, it, you know, and then – but then that's where – you know, letting go of your original vision and just letting it happen and seeing what happens because it's probably going to look better than you thought and it will probably, you'll end up using the environment more which will then make the build look better as well. Well, you never know until you try and, and exactly. that's something that I've and, always said is you, how do you know until you try what it's going to look like? I mean, you could be pleasantly surprised or horrified at the same time. Yeah. You just don't know. Um, and that's why there's a say. Exactly. And as a matter of fact, two saves, Manuel. a manual, <laughs> manual, manual saves, Any artist auto. worker in the No Man's Sky uh, universe. Yes. Uh, wow. And then auto save, auto's, auto's pretty uh, busy as well. Auto works a lot. Yeah. I use them um, both because sometimes yeah. I'll save one version and then a different mm-hmm. version and I don't want to lose Very either smart. of them. And it's exactly. like, um, let's be safe. Let's exactly. Use both. Yes, definitely. Yep. It's uh, saved my bacon many, many times on a lot of mistakes. <laughs> Phase exactly. deletion, oh, you name it, you name it. Yep. Um, if you had a free reign of any kind of building parts, what what, what would your dream? What the? Sorry, I lost my tongue there. Um, yeah. If you had, uh, if you, uh, I'm in, I'm just lost. <laughs> I think I know where you're going with this. If, and if, I'll, I'll like, if we could have some parts. new building parts, yeah. Yes. What, would, what would it be? Um, well, I'm sure in any builder's dream, you'll hear us, uh, say these, uh, over again, uh, frameless glass or something with a very, very, very thin bezel, mm-hmm. uh, around the edge, some new style prefabs, uh, would be wonderful. Um, some new freighter stuff like the new derelict freighters. When you walk through those, you can definitely see some design differences. Some of those rooms would be nice. Um. Uh, there's a particular angled uh, part 
that doesn't have a reverse of itself, that would be nice. Yes. And there's some other things, but in most of the streams, you'll hear frameless glass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like curved too. glass, a curved wall, a curved item, you know, something that has a curve to it. Yeah, curved walls, curves. definitely. We had them yeah. uh, sort of in uh, uh, the prefab, small. Prefab. Yeah, but that was before, like a long, long, long time yeah. ago. Is yeah. there. Back when the power doors were first around, too. Yes. And then they removed both of those items for some reason. I know. Yep. Like, why? Why, Sean? Mm -hmm. And actually, I came in shortly after they removed them. <laughs> of course, right? Mm -hmm. is, there, is there one thing you'd like to see improved in the building component of the game? Phase deletion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you delete one part, another part doesn't decide to go with it. Ooh. Um, yeah, you got me thinking there. I was thinking something else, but that... You know what? That one's a really good one. That was a really good one. Yeah. That. What were you thinking? I, I was thinking the up down control of oh. build camera. That. Yeah. That, I mean. Ooh, <laughs> well, normally I do. I do uh, say that one a lot. I actually sing that when I build on stream. You know, a lot and I'm of moving too. the camera around. <laughs> I'm like up and down on the build camera would be really great. Hello games, can we get that, please? Oh yes, please. Yes, <laughs> and, please. Uh, but yeah, up and down on the build camera would be a wonderful addition to the build camera, uh, and I think it could be achieved using triangle and square and pinning a recipe in a different way. Um, and most of people who build. Uh, if you're in creative, that doesn't really matter anyway. You don't need a recipe. No. And if you're doing it in any other mode, most people, when it comes up with a screen when you go to build it, you need this part. I, that's um, what I do as you know, well. This, yeah. I yeah. don't never use the recipe or pinned recipe. I'm always, uh, you know, like it, it comes up in the big square right-hand side of your screen. You can see it clean as day. Those are the parts or the components you need to build it. Um I, I would think that that's a you know something they could definitely do, um, and let's hope and cross our fingers that HG um, sees this and, and takes that under advisement because that that would really make a difference. The buttons are there, yes. and the combination yep. of buttons are there. They just have to yep. implement them. So, so let's uh, let's hope for that. Um, we are we're running very very short on time, and I don't want to cut uh, anything from this if if we can help it. Um, I want to thank you so much for, for taking the time out um, of your busy day uh, early this morning. And I know you got lots going on, you know, for the rest of the day and, and everything else. But you, uh, you took your time and you, um, you, you spent your morning talking with me about your build, how you do it, what, inspire you, what inspires you and, and everything. And, you know, um, I really hope that the uh, community... Uh, rallies around you know the whole building aspect of the game and comes up with some really creative things um one of the few people that's inspired me is is yourself and 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 a few others which um over the, the coming weeks i'll be uh, uh featuring as well on, on a lot of these um, interviews and um i just want to thank you so much um for showing me you know some of the ideas that go on in your head and your builds and um most of all just your time because um, it's really hard to get together with a lot of friends, you know, these days uh, with COVID and everything else. And uh, it seems everything has been amplified in terms of stress. And I just wanted to thank you very, very much for taking the time and talking with me and, and talking with the community and, and just being a part of this interview. Thank you so much, APG. Did I lose you? I hope we didn't lose you. If we did, at least we lost you at the end of the stream. Do you have me? I have you. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was going to say, I was just saying, you know, if we lost you, at least no, we I, got, it was at the end yeah. of the, uh, the, the filming here. Um, well, no, because I, I want to thank you for, you know, having me. It's, you know, it's, it's an honor. This community is amazing. Uh, it's the community that, you know, definitely, you know, keeps me coming back here and doing and, you know, inspiring me to create and, and to hopefully, you know, help inspire the community, you know, it, and to, to do what I can to help spawn creativity in this beautiful game. You, you're definitely a success there. You inspire a lot of people, uh, myself as well. And, you know, I hope to many more years uh, of, of inspiring and being inspired by you. Uh, whether you're, you're taking a break or not, um, even when you're taking a break, you, you inspired so many other people um, 
the future is just so wide open in terms of what can be done and uh, I look forward to so many more great updates um, and uh, hope for more building parts each and every time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. k Dog. thank you so much. It's been a super pleasure. Uh, I really appreciate it. You have yourself a great, great day and um, we'll definitely talk more uh, in the future. We've got, we've got lots of great plans together. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, as always, uh, this has been me, APG Action Pants Game, and wishing all of you out there in the No Man's Skyverse a little bit of love, peace, and starship grease. Hell yeah.